let's focus in more on titration curves. The key part to knowing your exact equivalence point when your, your moles of acid and base are the same is being able to monitor pH consistently. We can estimate it with an indicator dye, something that'll change color around that point. But ideally, we would actually also be tracking the exact pH after our additions of base or acid from our burette. So in general, so when you monitor pH, you can use a pH sensor. These measure conductivity in the solution, which is an indicator of the concentration of hydronium ions. And so by measuring conductivity, we can then pull out and extract data that is in pH. Um, so we use pH probes or sensors for this, um, and there's a, a variety of them. Uh, an indicator is something that is going to undergo a chemical change when the pH changes uh, or it hits a specific pH. These are typically dyes, uh, which will be kind of larger covalent structures that have different colors when they are uh, after they've undergone an acid base reaction themselves. They're usually brightly colored, so a very small amount is what you use uh, to actually see the color and to see the color change. And so we're going to introduce a new word here, endpoint, uh, which is frustratingly similar to equivalence point for those of us that have a hard time keeping track of similar words. Uh, but the endpoint of a titration is reached when you see that color change of an indicator. So your goal is to choose an indicator for your titration that has an endpoint that'll be very similar, if not the same, as your equivalence point. And sometimes that's hard to do. So here's an example using phenylphthalein of a strong acid, strong base reaction. So here is the chemical structure when it is under acidic conditions. This is when it's colorless. So this is it here. And this is the chemical structure when it's under basic conditions, when it's pink. Um, and what's really changed here is, uh, let's highlight these bonds that have changed. This bond between the carbon and oxygen breaks. Um, and we also see this OH become a double bond to a carbon. And this hydroxide here becomes uh, deprotonated or loses a proton. And so it undergoes a like actual uh, a change just once it hits about pH seven or eight, or sorry, about pH eight. Um, and so here we can see the color change at pH two, three, four, five. And so you can see between pH seven and pH nine is when you go from colorless to light pink. By the time it's a dark pink color, it's already like pH 10. It's pretty basic. So the equivalence point of your titration, you would want to have be similar to that end point in the color change. And so this is demonstrating that something that has an equivalence point of around between eight and nine would match the end point of our phenylphthalein uh, transition in color. So because these dyes are undergoing a chemical change at a specific pH, we find that most of these indicator dyes are actually just weak acids. Um, and so when they're in the basic conditions or acidic conditions, you'll see a different color. Some of them are polyprotic uh, weak acids. And so you'll actually see multiple color changes at different pHs overall. Um, and so here's this generic formula. Um, uh, this, I, whoops. I N or L N. This is supposed to. It's a capital I, and this is standing for indicator. Um, here, that's where it's written. Um, so basically, we're saying our indicator is losing a proton in most cases when it is in water and it forms that conjugate base plus H three O plus. Um, so that's kind of a, a way to generalize this. This is methyl red up in the upper left-hand corner showing a change from pink to yellow. And at pH five, it's that orange. So this one does a really good job of indicating things that have an equivalence point around pH five. In general, uh, you want, for our indicators, we're going to see that our weak acids, we're gonna see the pKa of that indicator have a pH, or the, the pKa will be about the pH at the equivalence point um, as just kind of an easy rule of thumb. 
But I prefer to actually use uh, this chart when I think through things, because I'm a, a pretty visual learner, I think. Um, and so this is a summary of some of our most common uh, acid-base indicators that we use. Um, so our phenylphthalein one is probably what you've used before right here. Crystal violet's a common one that we use or methyl red, uh, but all of these are options. And you'll notice that this gives you enough options that you can select an indicator die uh, that has an endpoint close to most of the general pHs that we would expect for an equivalence point. Um, and so for a strong acid and a strong base reacting, we expect to have a pH of about seven at our, at our uh, equivalence point. And so looking at this, I would come down and take a look at like what's happening with my indicators around pH seven. If I was gonna choose a perfect indicator for doing that titration to know exactly where the equivalence point is visually without using a pH sensor or probe, I would probably choose bromothiol blue, right? This is gonna be one where right when it goes from green to dark blue, that dark blue color would indicate a pH of seven. I might also pick um, the alzarin because the second it goes from orange to red, I can expect once I hit that bright red color, I'll be like, ah, that's pH seven. Uh, the one that's fennel red might be a little bit more challenging and I don't think I would choose it because it would be yellow for all of the pHs right here. So all of these lower pHs, it's yellow, 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 yellow. And then I'm not seeing that color change until about a pH of 7.5 when it goes orange and then red by pH eight. And so the pH seven is still gonna be the same color it's been the whole time. So it'll be a little bit off. Now, as I said, we usually do that strong acid, strong base titration with phenyl phthalein. Um, and we see a color change around here, which is at pH nine. <laughs> um, so when we're doing it, we're always like, find the lightest pink you can. And it's, it's way off from uh, where the equivalence point should be on those. But phenylphthalein is cheap, not toxic, easy to dispose of. It's like a really, really easy indicator to use. And so that's why it's used in so many labs. Anyway, so these are our, our indicators. You can come back to this chart um, and review it. And a lot of our problems that are like, pick an indicator, um, you'll come back to this chart to actually decide once you know the pH of the equivalence point. So I'll typically find the pH of the equivalence point first, and then I'll use that to choose an indicator uh, with an appropriate end point. Okay, we're gonna... So an important skill in designing a titration experiment is deciding what indicator die to actually use. Um, and so this example problem is gonna take a while. It's long, it's multi-stepped, even though it looks so simple. It's like, just choose an indicator. But there's a few things going on here that's different than what we did previously, which is uh, we looked at strong acid, strong base. And so we'll go into this some more with weak acid titration, but we're gonna pull our skills about um, acidic and basic salts and weak acids together to answer this problem. So we're gonna have 20 milliliters of a 0 0.102 molar NH3 solution titrated uh, with a 0.25 molar uh, nitric acid. This is a strong acid. And this is a weak base. When we combine these, and sorry, this is the Ka, NH3 is a base, haha. Uh, this is the NH4 plus Ka. So when we bring these together in our titration, we're going to have our NH3 and HNO3 uh, react until we've added the same amount of acid as base in terms of moles, and we'll have NH4 plus and NO3 minus. Now, uh, this is gonna be, going back to our acids and bases that are salts, this is gonna be a, sorry, <laughs> neutral salt or ion, let's call it an ion, that's what it is. 
Let's use the real words. And NH4 is the conjugate acid of a weak base. It, it's a conjugate acid, it's an acid. Uh, so this is a weak acid. So that tells me that at the equivalence point, I expect this to be less than pH seven. So I'm, I'm gonna be choosing an indicator that I expect to have a pH lower than seven. And I don't know exactly what that pH is gonna be. It depends on the amount of NH4 plus that's actually created in the titration. Uh, because once we're at that equivalence point, we just have these two things in solution, except the NH4 is going to actually react with the water because we'll have water around. So we'll have some of this happening. And it's this H3O plus that lowers the pH that we're generating. So both of these things are happening when we're at the equivalence point. Um, and so we're going to do basically a weak acid problem with an ice table to figure out what that exact pH is. So at this point, now that we've kind of set the problem up, I recommend pausing or uh, stop, this video will stop, and uh, trying this on your own. And then um, I'll show you the solution.